Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to finish the Schubert Impromptu Opus 90 series um, by talking about number one, um, since I did it backward from number four, three, two, and then this is the last episode, number one. And the reason why I did it the reverse order is really I thought number one of the list is the, of this whole uh, group is the most unique one. And we all know that Schubert is just, he couldn't stop just singing, right? Anything he wrote, uh, the, the melodic line, you always treat it in the way a vocalist would treat the melody. And you have plenty of, you know, beautiful melodies in his, if he's not the most uh, talented melodic writer, I, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, Mozart or any other composers, but he's definitely top three or top two in anyone's list. Um, however, this one, it really doesn't feel like a Schubert piece if you just first heard it, especially the very beginning. Somehow it felt like a Beethoven piece. Uh, it, it's very symphonic um, because here... I think this is woodwind, and and later on when it's you know to the climax of this part, this is definitely orchestral tutti. Right? Uh, of course, even when you play in the orchestra, you have to sing, but not in the way you sing as a solo soloist or as a vocalist. And also the very beginning, it's very peculiar. We all know this is a piece in C minor, but somehow he opens with a fortissimo double G octave and then a fermata on top. So it's a G chord, right? We, we thought this is, this is in G. Um, and, and why ever to open with, with something like this? I think maybe he was, you know, out of the chaotic chaos, whatever you call it, there is the beginning of the world, right? I think the opposite way of how list. Sort of the beginning of the world. You know, one is a quiet, one is a loud starting. Um, and this one <clears throat> very regularly are grouped in four measures. So four major phrasing from the very beginning. Basically, the first 40 measures are the first 10 phrases. Uh, so, you know, divided by, by four, there, there are 10 phrases. And, and something quite interesting, this opening phrase, which almost hard for us to identify the uh, the key. We, we said, you know, the beginning is a G, now that's a C minor. So you have But see, everything at the beginning is around D. Right, C, Do, Re, and then Do, Re, and then after this part, everything is around C. And then everything is around D. And that's a question, and that's the answer. Schubert put staccato, and not only he wrote staccato, the, the terminology, she also put a lot of dots, but here the staccato are by no means like that. They have to use pedal. Um, this is orchestral playing, If even when it's winds, they have this vibration even after they play. So the pedal here, instead of as 
a function of connecting notes. This is a function of making the note richer, especially the after sound. Everything else really it's, it's very similar, and we repeat this for eight phrases like this uh, all the way until thirty-two. So as I showed at the beginning, the last four-bar phrase here is the orchestral tutti. So it's really you have this big development from a single line until. Four bar phrases. You know, you have unfinished business. Now, softer. And here, there is this deep warmth in it because of this modulation. We are changing from C minor to A flat major. Here, uh, from major 41, here comes, I think, the second theme group. Uh, quite uniquely, the left hand now, instead of chordal, or like almost hymnal-like texture, now this is watery. Yeah, you have this endless flow to it. And again, don't accent anything on this. However, it doesn't mean Within the left hand, there is no contrast. Yeah. First of all, um, if you uh, really dig this in, uh, deep into this, um, there are two ways for Schubert to show a second line, a second melodic line. First, from the beginning, and then. Um, and also, even when the left right hand is not playing anything, you have as this is from the tonic and then diminish tonic, yeah. The same from tonic and then diminish, right? But you feel this. Tension. Um, and for the right hand, first of all, the repeated notes you will always have to go forward, right? You don't play them exactly the same way. It, there's got, got to have a direction. Interesting is that it's no more four major phrases, it's six major phrases. You have the four major main melody, but then in a quieter volume, almost like an afterthought. Modulation, but the same form. The same pattern with a afterthought. And here um, we, we are in measure 41, and you see this pattern all the way to measure 73. Um, and here I'll share a, a story. I think it's true, but I'm not 100% sure. It's told by David Dubois in the Julia piano performance classes. He said once uh, Stravinsky was watching a concert with Horowitz, um, and they were sitting in the audience, this is in Paris, 
and somebody was playing Schubert sonata. And uh, Shubinsky, you know, in the middle of the concert, whispered to Horowitz, he said, Mr. Schubert, we know you're great, but please stop. And, and why is that? I mean, I don't think there's any disrespect uh, for, for Schubert, but really his pieces are so long. Here's the reason. Um, if Beethoven were to develop a motive, the motive is usually very short, maybe three notes, maybe two notes even, yeah, the, right, the beginning of, of the Laza Du, that's it, that's it. But you see this throughout, yeah, even towards the end, the coda, da da di da da di um, or this very classic example of right? You have this motive of only having two notes, but of course with the rhythmic pattern as well. Uh, but there you have the rhythm plus two note, drop of third. But here you already have a full length, fully developed four major melody. Other ways you can modulate, like Schubert did. Or you can do this in the left hand in another voice, in another register, instead of soprano, now uh, tenor. derives from the same motive. That's why it's so long, right? Because you have to do the whole thing all over again. Um, and here, after we finish this part, uh, and I think this is theme group number three. Yeah, left hand now changed from this kind of watery like figure now is yeah this has a very natural way to show the urgency of this yeah it's almost creepy to a certain point because uh, from here this point on we have this g this dominant pedal point uh, lasting forever and then left hand it's, it's so dark, it almost reminds me of the Earl King, right? There's a death upon everybody. Um, but here, it, is, it starts with something beautiful. Maybe it's a disguise. Right, it starts with solo singing. Instead of drop of force. Right, or from from the now it's a leap of force. Yeah, you see this kind of a, a turn in, in terms of this pointing to something hopeful. Yeah. But here is a duet, yeah, doubling. The duet partner also sings.
So everything <laughs> he decides it's four four times as long, uh, because there are four measures. And of course, this thing pushed onto the very climax of the whole piece. <laughs> Climax, we have the uh, we have this part, and and this now we change from everything triplet to sixteen notes, but this is the theme group number two, so everything is the same but disguised with different uh, patterns um, and here there is a quite hard technical aspect to this um, we know we have to sing the top right and we probably use pedal we, we connect them but then this middle this middle voice by no means we should not pedal yeah, it's, it's not legato this is a little separated along with the syncopated left hand so we should be able to play this and do, 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 and then all at the same time uh, something like that so so really uh, watch the pedal um, and here again, all four major groups, four major groups, uh, theme three comes back. This time uh, in the key of the dominant. Um, and the coda really is, is something uh, quite, quite interesting. Um, it, the coda uses theme one. Right foot from the right hand. And then this is a very distance from backstage G, like, almost like a bell but we know sometimes bell are associated with death yeah again uh, uh, with this excessive pedal point so so this kind of embracing death It's almost like a Beethoven late sonata. You have a crescendo, but diminuent, or a subito piano. Yeah, we see this in 109 all the time. And so really, as beautiful as these sets are, let's not forget this is the late pieces. This is it. D A ninety nine, not quite the last year of his life, but close to because he only had nine hundreds, right? This is close to the nine hundred. Um, so here we 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 because of this this piece we understand why the Schubert pieces are so long, right? Their their development of a fully developed melody. So all you can do is to modulate or to change to a different register. That's it. Right, so I have to do it over and over again. Um, as you can see that my office wall has been cleared, uh, and actually behind the camera there were boxes of <laughs> scores and boxes and books. Um, so I am happy to say that this is the last video I will ever shoot in my Weber State office. Um, Starting in May, uh, we have to, you know, pack the house and start moving and drive from Ogden to to Baylor. So that's about, you know, almost 1,300 miles. Um, so it will take a while, and then um, the trucks. I don't know how long the trucks will take for for them to deliver my piano into my new home. 
uh, and I probably don't get my office until uh, this this fall semester starts in August. Um, so there will be changes, and there will be you know a period of time that I will <laughs> stop uh, uploading videos, but. Really, I feel very grateful uh, that I started doing YouTube videos here in this very room two years ago. Um, and I want to thank you for your support for the past almost two years. Um, see you sometime in a month uh, from Texas. Thank you. See you next time.